Okay, so from a health coach perspective, um, looking at stress, stress is the number one cause of all of our lifestyle diseases. And I'll just comment on what some of those lifestyle diseases are. They're things like diabetes, mm. um, inflammation of the joints, i.e. Mm. arthritis. So the itises um, are definitely linked to stress. Yeah. So different, different human beings absorb and handle stress differently. Mm. And when stress goes from being your day-to-day -day responses to to danger what your body thinks or what your brain feels is danger when it starts to become chronic that's where the health concerns come in if you are having a one-off every week of running away from a saber-toothed tiger that's not chronic inflammation or chronic stress that is a one-off um, issue for the day and you need to run away from whatever it is that's that or, or turn around and fight. Yep. Um, and your body is very capable of doing that. And it is absolutely geared to do that for survival. Mm -hmm. However, we're not fi fighting cyber tooth tigers or bears or anything, because most of us live in cities or suburbs and we're not fighting that. So what's happening is we're putting our bodies in continual stressful situations. And that over time becomes chronic. Mm -hmm. And that's what is causing all of these lifestyle diseases, most of them ending in the isms or the uh, or yeah. tis, the tisses, um, those diseases. Um, and so everybody's a little bit different. So you'll get people who um, will experience gut, gut health issues mm -hmm. because that's their way, their body's way of, of handling stress. Um, some bodies handle it through metabolic concerns leading towards pre-diabetic and diabetes yep. oh, again lifestyle disease um, Alzheimer's is a lifestyle disease mm. um, and um, arthritis um, which is chronic inflammation um, destroying the joints in the body and causing in some cases extreme pain but also there is um, rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease, which is definitely stress related as well. I found that a lot of times where I actually overdrive our, uh, our body so that oh, yes. we are going to get going. And then once we are going to go through this process over and over again, as a every single day kind of episode, like you said, is going to be a chronic condition. Correct. But there are things you can do in your lifestyle and in your mm -hmm. diet to help you manage these stressful conditions that happen day in and day out so that the effects don't become um, a lingering condition in the body. Yeah. Um, that you can actually start working on creating um, a lifestyle that reduces your stress, mm -hmm. but also a diet that nourishes the body and supports the body so that um, you're, you're healing from the inside out as well mm. um, and looking after and taking care of the body from the inside, but also taking care of the lifestyle, which is impacting the inside, but you're doing it from the outside in. So. Sure, sure. So um, stress um, comes in, as I said, through lifestyle, but it also comes in through a very poor diet. Mm. So one of the first places to start is actually looking at your diet. And I don't want anybody to get stressed or feel like I'm going to lecture them about a, what a healthy diet consists of. But what I would like people to do is start looking at their diet and seeing it for what it really is. So if you look at um, fast food, for example, fast food is that it's fast food but it's dead food. It's um, food that has been overprocessed. It's usually full of chemicals, sugar, fat, salt, that doesn't need to be there. And it's usually been stored in a freezer for long-term storage. And I'm not talking a home freezer. I'm talking about a commercialized freezer and it can live in there for not just months, but we're talking upwards, periods of time. 
and the that only living scary <laughs> it is scary it is scary um and to the point where the buns that are on our hamburgers are loaded with sugar so they taste sweet that's very addictive mm. because the human body was designed to look for sweet because it's rare in nature mm -hmm. so the taste of sweet things is a very rare thing in nature and yet the body runs on glucose, so it needs sugar. So the body is designed to pull the glucose out of all of our food, process it as quickly as possible to get the glucose in, to get that the the sugar into the into the cells of the body, so that the body can get energy to function. Yep. That's natural. That's normal. But we're meant to get it in the form of blueberries or an apple or an orange, mm -hmm. and they come wrapped up in fiber. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about a hamburger bun that's loaded with sugar and salt, as well as usually a fake fat of some kind, um, there are so many chemical versions of fat that are in our foods. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's put on a baked and put on a shelf and it sits there. It has preservatives in it. It can last for years on the shelf. Mm -hmm. That is what I consider a dead food. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not a nourishing food in any, any form. It will fill you up. And that's about it. Well, um, um, step one, really look at your diet and be honest with yourself about what it is that you're really eating. Where's your sugar? Where's your fat? Where's your salt? Um, are you eating foods that are loaded with preservatives? Are you eating foods that come in a lot of packaging, mm -hmm. which is also harmful for the environment? So if when you start thinking about that, just that's step one, really look at that. Step two is starting to really look at your life. Um, what do you do in your spare time? You scroll screens, um, you're looking at comparing yourself to other people on Facebook. That's very stressful. Mm. The, the one thing I would say is the only person you need to compare yourself to is the person you used to be and the person who you are right now and the person you want to be. So stay in your own lane and look at you. Mm -hmm. um, and don't get all wrapped up in other people's lives. Most of the stuff that's on social media is fake anyway. They're doing it to make people think that they've got a better life than everybody else. Yep. And the truth is they don't. Yep. They're dealing with the same stressors, emotions, and disappointments that the rest of the human race is dealing with. Um, totally some is more extreme that. than the other. But if you start comparing yourself to that and have FOMO, fear of missing out of this great lifestyle, you're not going to help your level of stress. You're gonna be comparing yourself. Yep. The other thing is sleep. Sleep mm -hmm. is probably one of the most important things you can do for your own body. Yep. It, it helps your body process what it needs to do. It helps your brain process. And the reason we go into REM sleep is we need to process everything that's going on and the brain does all of its really heavy lifting work while we're asleep. Yep. It will take what you learn during the day and process it, hold it in there, work it all out, and you wake, can wake up the next morning and all the problems are solved. Mm. It's really quite interesting. Mm. Uh, the other thing that's um, very good for stress relief is at the end of the day, write down uh, three things that must be done the next day. You know, priority one, priority two, priority three. Write those down, get them out of your head and onto a piece of paper, look at it, prioritize it for the next day and go to bed and don't worry about it. And before you drift off to sleep, find one really positive thing, either about yourself, your family or your life or your job or whatever, and focus on that as you drift off to sleep. That is a really nice way of getting a good night's sleep. Very simple. Um, you can also do um, breathing exercises. There are yoga poses to wake up in the morning. There are yoga poses to um, kind of take take a step back from your day. So when you're ha when you're about to go into a stressful meeting, you can do some quick yoga stretches, some deep breathing exercises to calm your nervous system before you go into that meeting, so that you go in in a calm state, and then you won't get as rattled. Um, and you won't get as stressed. Um, so sleep, good quality breathing exercises really yep. help with stress. They help break that link 
that affects the body. And so it takes it out of the body completely. And you get to a state of calm mm. before you go into a, these horrendous meetings, whatever they are. But over time, when you when you start getting better and better and creating this new ha new habits that will help you, um, you'll realize that you're going to need less and less of those outside support mechanisms because you'll find that support and the healing happening right here in you, within yourself. And that is really where Mother Nature intended it to be. Mm. The other thing that is really good for stress is something that Mother Nature has in abundance, and that mm. is being out in her, mm. breathing the air, having a little bit of exposure to sunlight. I'm not saying, not asking you to sunbake at all. I'm asking you to look at sunlight and mm -hmm. be in sunlight for, for short periods of time. It boosts your vitamin D, which boosts your immune system, which helps you stay healthy from the inside out. Yep. It helps you reset your serotonin, melatonin levels, which help you get your get up and go first thing in the morning and then help you slide into the evening to a more restful evening. So starting your day, actually look, being in sunshine so that it can help your eyes adjust mm -hmm. and help your body get to that sunlight phase. It's really, really important for balancing things out, which is part of a morning routine. So the other thing is um, start looking at your day and looking at time pockets yep. where you're wasting time on screens or tele mindless TV, not educational television, mm -hmm. um, where you're not spending time with quality time with your family, actually engaging and interacting as a family unit or engaging with your friends in conversation or company doing activities together. Yep. When you start looking at all of that, finding space in your life where you can introduce new calming practices will help with stress. Being in nature and actually being in nature, smelling nature, looking at nature, seeing birds, looking at the water, hearing the wind, smelling mother nature is calming to the body because that's a rhythm of life that we were born into. Yep. And it's the rhythm of life that the humans and mother nature co-created. Mm. Okay, my key takeaway, number one is the body has all the answers. Mm. So your body already has the wisdom and it's been trying to talk to you and we just need to listen. So a good night's sleep, a good quality balanced diet, movement, either yoga or walking in nature, being in nature, and creating routines that help you focus on items that will help you actually de-stress. So breathing, um, appreciating what's around you, and being calm as you approach situations that you're either afraid or scared of, and really, really looking at your time and seeing how you're wasting it or using it because we're all given 24 hours a day and there are some people out there who are killing it in terms of nailing their day and having their day respond the way they want it to not being controlled by the outside world they're controlling mm. their time and their day so being honest with yourself and that will help you reflect on some habits you might be having that you want to have a good clear look at